Hello! Today we are going to six different thrift stores. I'm such a nerd. I made a little map and I want to take you guys along with me. So if you don't know me yet, uh, my name is Leela and I own a little shop called Libby Vintage uh, where I sell hand-picked vintage clothing mostly on Etsy. have an Instagram account where I love to share behind the scenes content and I'm trying to uh, share more on YouTube as well. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go thrifting. We are in Massachusetts, um, which is not usually where I am. I live in Maine, live in up in central Maine in like the Skowhegan area. We are in Massachusetts for a fly fishing convention that my boyfriend is working at. He is a full-time fly fishing guide in the summertime. So he is here tying flies, showing off some of his skills, and making some networking connections, which is really exciting. And I'm here to do some sourcing for my business, so that works out really well. So I just dropped him off sitting in my car. I just ate breakfast, drinking some coffee. Can't go thrifting without coffee. <clears throat> We're gonna head over to the first thrift store, which is about six minutes away. And it's a small thrift store. We're gonna start there. And then we're going to head over to, right now we're in Marlboro, and we're going to go mostly do our thrifting in Worcester. So let's do this. So we have landed at the first thrift store. Um, they open at 10 and it's 9.47 right now. So we will sit and wait here for a little bit for them to open. But I forgot to mention in my intro that I've been to one thrift store so far already. We landed yesterday in the morning and I went to the fly fishing show for just a few hours to walk around and see things. And then I left and went to get a head start on all of my thrift places <laughs> on this trip. And so the first place I went to was a Savers Thrift Superstore. And so I'll show you, I won't show you what I found at this thrift store but I'll show you what I didn't take home. So stuff that made it into my cart, but that I ended up leaving behind. So I'll play you a little clip of that. And so I don't have any Savers thrift stores in Maine. They just don't, they just don't have them in Maine. So super fun for me to come to other states and go to Savers superstores. They are huge in comparison to what I have in Maine, just massive endless stores. I think it took me about two hours to go through this entire store. So today we're going to be a little bit more strict with our time. We have, that was um, number one of seven. So today we're going to six thrift stores. That was the first of seven. Today we're going to tackle those six and we're going to see how much we can get through. Maybe some of them will be a bust. Um, who knows? We're going to just check it out. But anyway, so sitting in the parking lot for a sec and then we'll go inside and see what we can find. We just finished up with that thrift store. I didn't find anything in there, unfortunately. Um, it was super cute. It was kind of small, so I didn't film a lot in there. It was really just like one room and then like a small side room with some home goods in it but everyone in there was super nice and the prices were great i just couldn't find anything vintage that i wanted to put in the shop so i didn't get anything unfortunately but definitely a nice little spot but next on my list we're going to head over to worcester and hit up a savers that is just off of 290 so we're gonna go to a savers now Hopping on voiceover here to share with you some pieces that I am not picking up and why. So these jeans were so cute but stained and too expensive. Then I found this incredible white stag coat, quilted coat. It was missing a button and it had some really strange staining on the bottom. There was also way more staining on the back too. I was really sad to have to leave that one behind. This was a gorgeous wool duster cardigan. There was just something about it that wasn't speaking to me. I loved the tag, I loved the material, but I ended up leaving it behind. This one too, super cute. It had some major pilling on the inside, but look at that cute tag. But because of the pilling, I knew it would take me way too long to sweater shave it, so I left that one. And over to the skirt section, I could have sworn this was a vintage skirt. It looked so vintage, but it wasn't, so I didn't get it. And this L.L. Bean corduroy 
dress so cute a little bit too expensive and not in stellar condition so I left that one behind and this gap denim skirt was so cute but it had you can't really see it in the video but it has some staining on the butt there so I left that one as well and this super cute Land's End fleece just a little bit out of my price range uh, so I left that one behind as well okay so savers was great I spent around $72 and ended up paying around $8 a piece. It's more than I usually like to pay, but when the goods are good quality and really nice and high ASP items, I don't mind paying, um, you know, seven or $8 a piece for those items. So really happy with that trip and I'm starting to feel a little bit hungry, but I think I'm going to try to go to one more thrift store and then I'll eat my lunch. But I think the next thrift store we're going to go to is a Goodwill that's probably like five minutes from here. So we're going to do that. Okay, heading into the Goodwill, I'm seeing these very strange tags with sizes on them, but no price. Very odd. And I found these really cute shoes that were just totally missing the bottom part of the heel, so I had to leave those. And then these adorable shoes that were just too expensive. Okay, so back from the Goodwill, and that was a really interesting experience. It was unlike any Goodwill I've ever been to. It's called Morgan Memorial Goodwill Industries, and it seems like it's totally different from like the average Goodwill that you would go to. Everything was not priced the same that it usually is in other Goodwills. Like everything had a tag that stated what size it was, but then prices were listed like at the beginning of every row and every everything was really strangely priced and the aisles were really skinny and I just kept like being in people's way and I I was like just felt out of my element it was like not the kind of place where you can use your Goodwill discount card so I don't know I don't know what kind of Goodwill this was but it was definitely not the type that I'm used to so I bought 10 things and I'm feeling really hungry now. So what we're gonna do is go to the next spot and park and eat lunch. Let's see, where are we going next? So I think I've decided that we're gonna go to this place called Grime, which is a new and used clothing store. And it might be not in my price range, which is fine, but I think I still wanna go check it out. So we're gonna head over there. I'm going to eat my lunch and we'll go in and see what we can find. Um, so I will see you there. So Grime ended up being a mostly vintage store and it was exceptional. It gave me so much inspiration for my own vintage store that I would like to open up someday. So I highly recommend going to this store if you are ever in this area. Then I quickly ate lunch and headed over to the last thrift store, which was a Salvation Army. This place was huge. It was in like a giant warehouse. I couldn't believe it. This was one of the first things I found. I didn't end up taking it home with me. Just a super cute ribbed top. And then you guys, so much of the store was new with tag Zara. They must have bought a palette or something because it was everywhere. Okay, look at the collar on this one. I'm just really into big collars right now, I guess. Super, super cute. This is a little view of my cart before I checked out. And me walking back to the car with all my goodies. Okay, done with the last surf store. That Salvation Army was great. I couldn't believe how big it was in there. I came out with 15 pieces. My cost of goods was a little over $4 a piece, which is perfect. So that was great. I think I'm gonna end the vlog here. I don't have any more thrift stores to go to and basically what I'm gonna do is wrap up the rest of my trip with Logan. It's gonna be a fun end to the trip and then we're gonna head back to Maine and that's where I'll do the haul and show you everything that I got. Definitely a lot of pieces. It's gonna be a lot of good vintage shoes, jackets, jeans, all sorts of good stuff. So we're gonna do the haul in Maine and yeah, thanks so much for coming along. I had a really fun time. I think out of all of these stores, my favorites were this Salvation Army, the Two Savers, and I really enjoyed going to that place called Grimes and just getting inspo for a good vintage shop. Can't wait to someday hopefully be able to open up my own vintage shop. So I will 
give you guys a little bit more of a wrap up when I get back to Maine as well and give you a total for how much I spent um, and maybe like my overall cost of goods per item maybe and how exactly how many items I thrifted. So more to come, but for now I'm gonna sign off. Thank you guys so much again for coming with me on this journey and I'll see you guys back in Maine. Okay, we are back in Maine and I'm ready to show you guys all the stuff that I got while I was in Massachusetts. I have one, two, three, four bags full of stuff to show you, um, but I wanna start off with shoes before we get into the clothing. I literally have so much clothing to show you, so I'm gonna kinda rapid fire go through each piece so that the video doesn't get super, super long, but happy to be home snowing outside I'm feeling cozy and just ready to dive into this haul let's start with the shoes um, so what I'm gonna do is show you all the pieces and then at the end I will tell you how much I paid um, for, from all the thrift stores that I went to how much I spent total on this trip and then how much I paid per item taking that number and dividing it by the number of items that I sourced so let's get to it first pair of shoes are these they're so stinking cute they're like a kind of a needlepoint design with two flowers on the toes and then more flowers throughout. But gosh darn, aren't those the cutest? Brand is Zalo, I think. That's how you say it. And they're a little bit worn on the bottom, but couldn't leave those behind. So cute and perfect for spring. Then I got these. This is the third pair of shoes I got. They're a 90s sort of minimalist office vibes shoe. I just love this lace up style and all the different textures that they um, created with that leather and they're Valerie Stevens brand so cute not that worn much and from the 90s you know I love the 90s <laughs> these are also really cute they're a pointed toe um, with like a woven toe box and stacked heel and they have super cute little ankle straps and they are Chandler's leather uppers is what it says. So cute. I think those are 70s. I have to do a little bit more research research on them, but I'm pretty sure those are a 1970s shoe, which is exciting. And that's it for the shoes. So moving right along to clothing. Let's do it. Starting with this one. This is a cropped fleece sweater kind of a simple everyday piece but it's by EMS it's vintage EMS and it's a really cute mock neck style with just like a really chunky kind of knobby knit fleece that I really like to grab but I just thought that was so cute and a great everyday vintage piece to have in your wardrobe okay then I got this super cute jacket it's a cropped fit with a southwestern style print and a cute little collar buttons up the front it's leslie fay look at how cute that is i just i think that there are so many different ways you could style this one we have a beautiful rayon skirt here i'm a sucker for <laughs> rayon skirts paid a little bit too much for this one um but that's okay it's a pastel floral print with pleats and I just thought it was really cute. Maxi length, really great for going into the springtime. Ooh, got some denim in here. This pair of denim is Eddie Bauer, high rise mom jean, tapered leg fit, super cute. I really like Eddie Bauer denim. I think it's made really well and just a really classic, um, classic styles that they make in sort of a nice lighter medium wash. Okay, I was so excited about this. So this is a vintage L.L. Bean Railroad Stripe mini skirt. So cute. I'm obsessed with this. Cute little pleats in the front. There's that little L.L. Bean label. Oh, it's so cute. I think it's gonna be too big for me so I won't keep it, but very tempted. I got this from the men's section, a really nice high quality chamois shirt, like super, super soft, and it's by this brand. They have really, really nice men's flannels. 
vintage 90s and in a really nice color too. So I was happy to find that. This dress, I don't even know. I still have to figure out like when this dress is from and sort of what it is, but really, really cute, unique style with a double layered sailor collar. And it's in the back too, double layered. Has this really cute little V thing here. The sleeves are cute. This is cute. This is how you get into it. I just don't even know. I mean, it, it kind of feels 80s to me, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. That's the brand. I think it's it's going like 80s, 90s, but I could be wrong. I need to do more, more research, but it has kind of a linen-y feel to it. But really cool. I couldn't leave that behind. I thought it was a really unique style. It's like minimalist meets dopamine dressing. So I had to grab that. Got this fisherman sweater. Always picking these up. They're just such high quality. You can really feel it. 100% wool um, with beautiful leather woven style buttons. And that Erin style diamond knitting here, which is so beautiful. I was happy to get that and it has patch pockets which is even better moving on to these three western beauties um western button-ups do really well at my booth um at the fairfield antiques mall so i was happy to find these this is just a simple plaid western button-up i really like the label the county seat super cute this one is really nice just a black Western button up with lots of, here the other one shows it better, lots of snaps in a diamond shape. And I love the tag on this one too. Really, really cute. And the last Western button up I got was this one in a blue color with really cute like patchwork style there. And also has really cute snaps. And that is Miller brand. I've sold a like 70s puffer ski jacket by this brand, but I've never sold any of their other um, any of their other pieces. So that was an exciting find. This is really cool. I'm really into the sailor collar style lately, but this is just a blouse, I guess, but it's corduroy. Maybe it could be considered a blazer, but it's got a really cute sailor style collar. And I might consider replacing these buttons. I don't know, because they're just, they're very gold. They're just, I, they don't really match, but maybe that's, you know, what people want. So I haven't decided yet, but I love that it's corduroy. I love that it has that statement collar and it's a really nice, um, I don't know, it's just nice. The pockets are faux, which is a bummer, but really cute. Here we have a classic all that jazz um, maxi dress in a beautiful blue floral print and it has a really pretty corset back style which i love but i had to grab this since we're getting into springtime even though it doesn't feel like that and it's blizzarding outside um i know it's best to kind of be a few seasons ahead of things and just start stocking up spring even when you're not feeling spring. So that's what we're trying to do. Speaking of fun spring colors, I thought this was so cute. This is a Ann Taylor, Ann Taylor fully lined wool. It's 80% wool, but it's just such a pretty like soft pastel green sort of houndstooth print skirt. I loved that. I thought that was really pretty. Also speaking of spring, I bought this bathing suit vintage 90s. I just love the style. Actually, my personal bathing suit that I wear um, when I'm swimming is this style. And I just think it's really comfortable. Might not be for everyone, but very classic style with shorts and a tank upper with kind of a textured feel. But this is Jansen. So I thought that was really cute. Has a cross back design and can't wait to get that listed for spring.
Okay, more flannels for Fairfield Antiques Mall. Really nice classic pattern. This one didn't have a tag, but based on the feel of it, I knew it was old. It has just like a very soft and worn in vintage feel to it. Also have this blue one, really cute. That is, what is this, Graffiti? Graffiti brand. Also has a really soft worn in feel, but these always do so well when I price them like within the 12 and $15 range. So I'm always happy to pick those up. And another one, this one's acrylic, nice casual print. I don't know what that means, casual print, <laughs> but really nice. And moving on. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. Okay, this is a buttery soft leather coat, notched collar by Leathers by New England from Peabody Mass. So cool. But the fun thing about this, that it was missing a button and I was really bummed. I was like, oh no, I can't get this because it's missing its button. And then upon further investigation, I found that it was in the pocket. And I think they had not marked it up because it was missing its button. So I scored a good deal on it. But yes, I'm so excited about this piece. I'm gonna do some more research, see how much it's worth. But it's got great details and just has a very high quality feel. Okay, then we got a bunch of bottoms here, red bottoms. This is the first pair. 1970s corduroy. Wow, they appear very red in the on, on the screen, but they're actually more of like a maroon color, but so cute. Look at those pockets. There is a tag right there. So cute. They have a little flare on the bottom of the leg. And we have some vintage ski pants. A little bit out of season at this point, but maybe not. I don't know. Couldn't leave them behind. Cool tag. And they have stirrups on the bottom. Okay, and last pair of red pants. Well, these are pink. But they're a high rise, tapered leg, zip up front with a snap. And at first I was kind of curious about the snap and I was like, are these a junior's jean? But I think that's just the style. They have a really old metal zipper and a tag that's similar to the tag on those 70s corduroy jeans. So I think these are older than I think they are. So I'll have to do some more research on those and find out exactly when they're from. Always picking these up when I can. Um, vintage 90s faded black corduroy jumper. These are so cute. I wear stuff like this in my personal wardrobe all the time. Buttons up the side, patch pockets. What more could you want? Okay, we got some more denim. These are Westport. And I really like the detail on the front. Got a double button and just an interesting pocket design here. High, high rise tapered leg mom jean fit. Two more pairs of jeans from that bag. Are these chic shorts? Love it. They do have this little like faded area down here, which I don't know. I decided to pick them up anyway, because maybe it's okay. It just cut me off. I think I'm having some storage issues on my phone, but I left off with these chic shorts and we're going to move right along to the next thing, which are these Calvin Klein jeans, classic mom jean cut high rise tapered leg. And they have that papery tag on the inside that I like to find. But I love Calvin Klein jeans. I think that they're really high quality and I love to find them. Okay, super excited about these. These are purple velvet high rise tapered leg pants, trousers, super soft. They're a rayon silk blend and they're by Liz Claiborne and I'm obsessed with them. And if they were my size, I would be keeping them. They're so silky soft and I was really excited to find them. Okay, then we had some great finds in the men's section at that first um, Savers thrift store that I went to. Found this Shetland wool navy blue sweater. 
super, super cute. That'll go to my booth at the Fairfield Antiques Mall. Um, I sell mostly men's clothing over there, so that's why all of this men's stuff is going there. Um, I just have more of a male customer base there, and I really love providing those high quality men's pieces. So that's exciting. And speaking of high quality men's pieces, I also found this Sherpa lined blaze orange vest. This is an amazing find. I am really excited about this. The tag is so amazing. It's hard to see the sun's going down, but um, this is such a cool piece. It's got pockets with little like shotgun shell holders in there, but super, super cute. Also found this vintage Levi's orange tab denim skirt. At first, I wasn't sure if it was real when I first found it, but it does have that um, type of Levi's label that um, looks authentic to me. So very excited about that one. Love finding vintage Levi anything. <laughs> Skirts, jeans. Found these vintage Jordache jeans. Jordache was the first denim brand that really got me into vintage denim. So I'm just still as obsessed as ever with picking it up. Has a really cute fade style and sort of a distressed flare hem. And then I picked up some vintage coats that I'd love to show you. So this one, sort of a swing style. I don't know. So I just recently watched the first episode of The Marvelous Miss Maisel. And this coat really reminds me of the one that she wore in the first episode. Just that, I don't know, that pink color and just single button closure at the neck. I thought that was so cute. And it has a nice design on the back with that diamond shape. And I just love that lucite button. So cute. So I was really excited to pick that one up. And then this big girl is possibly my favorite find of the entire trip. I don't normally pick up coats like this because I sell mostly on Etsy and I just, the shipping costs are out of this world. Um, but this was worth it to me. So first of all, what really, you know, spoke to me about this piece was the brown with the black embroidery, but also just like the style is stunning. It's long, the lining is in immaculate condition, the tag is gorgeous. It's just stunning. It has some puffy, puffy sleeves and really just so cute, so beautiful. So I'll just have to charge, you know, charge for it with shipping costs in mind so that I can ensure that I can make a good profit on it. So very excited about that coat. Moving right along to this really beautiful chunky knit sweater. Looked handmade at first, but it does have a tag. Really cute tag. So I love that. Just a very, very cute everyday knit sweater. Oh, you know I love this brand. Vintage Woolrich. So cute. Look at that. It has one small hole right here, which I will mend. But other than that, it's in exceptional condition and just absolutely adorable. I love this style of sweater. I love selling this style of sweater. More sweaters. This is a handmade sweater, kind of a mock neck style with some buttons up the neck there. But I just love the shape of the sleeves with the puff up here. And then it's got um, kind of a bishop style sleeve down there. But super cute. I can't wait to try this one on and model it. I just think it has a really cute fit. And it's a nice soft um, knit material as well that still has some nice weight to it. Uh, my pile over here is getting really large. <laughs> we have another really nice men's piece for the antique mall. Another um, cotton flannel. This one is 100% cotton and there's the brand. But I just love that pattern. The green and red, it's so, it's so classic. Just a few more pieces here. These are really fun. I found these in the men's section. These are three vintage Pendleton wool shirts. I'll show you one of them. They're all the same style, but they have the 
chest pockets and that collar, they're falling. But there is that vintage Pendleton tag. They're so nice. And I found the, the three of them all together and they're in exceptional condition. So I was really, really excited about that. Those will probably be going to my booth. Um, but I got those three different colors, like a red and a green and a blue. Super cute. This is really cute. So this is just like a, it buttons all the way up. Actually, it snaps all the way up the front, but it's just like a denim sort of chambray um, red check dress by White Stag, but so cute. It's maxi length and I just really liked the style of it. Like really cute everyday dress for spring and summer. Um, love that one. Okay, two more things and they're really cool. So this, I have to do more research on this, but I think that this is a 1940s like blazer jacket. So it's got like a peplum waist Someone removed all of the original buttons. I'm heartbroken, but I will replace the buttons with something um, that fits the style. But that collar is just so cute. But I just can't get over that peplum waist. It's gorgeous and it has heavy shoulder pads. And this is the tag that is currently um, falling off. I have to re-stitch it, but I don't know. What do you think? I think it's maybe 1940s. Maybe I'm wrong and it's like some weird 70s thing, but I, I don't know. I have to do some research on the brand, but it's definitely wool. It's a nice houndstooth. So we shall see when this is from and how much it is worth, but I'm very excited about it. I think it's a timeless style that's still very um, relevant and cool to this day. Okay, last piece and we're going out with a bang this okay it ended my video again so um back to what i was saying main guide wool plaid jacket it's so beautiful i've never seen one in this plaid style before it's absolutely gorgeous it's got pockets and it has side hand pockets down here it's so beautiful it doesn't fit my boyfriend so i will be selling it but i'm in love Hello, it's me again, tuning in for a little outro. It's a few days later. I am wearing the same exact thing I was wearing two days ago. I'm a little bit of an outfit repeater, but um, I'm sorry, my messy uh, studio space is behind me. I'm working on cleaning that today. But I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in to this video, coming along for the thrift with me, sticking around for the haul. I had such a good time making this video and I cannot wait to produce more content like this. So definitely subscribe and turn on those notifications if you want to be in the know when new videos are coming out and give it a like, give it a comment, um, respond to any of those little questions I put out throughout the video. Let me know what you thought and if you'd like to see more of this style. Also let me know how you liked the um, style of showing you guys what I didn't pick up when I was in the store or do you like seeing what I did pick up in the store while I'm in the store. Um, just let me know what you think of the format and I will always be taking that into consideration when I produce more content. So anyway, thank you guys so much again and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Love that. Love that. I just love it. We love that. Love these. Love to see it. Love to find. I love them. So cool. So cute. So pretty. Very excited about that one.